So we all know Captain Sully story. Both engine failed, landing on water on Hudson. But do we know another story? A perfectly serviceable Boeing 767 losing its both engine during cruise. How? Let's find out. Hello ladies and gentlemen, your captain speaking from flight deck. My name is Captain Surinder Singh. Welcome aboard the plane talking. Sit back, relax and enjoy your journey. Hi ladies and gentlemen, this is Captain Surinder Singh. Once again, welcome aboard in another episode of plane talking. We all have seen Sully and we have all seen the dead stick landing means landing the aeroplane with both engine failed a wonderful landing on Hudson River but do we know this was not the first landing the first landing was carried out way back in 1983 on Air Canada flight 143 in today's episode we will see what all caused this aircraft to lose its both engine during cruise and how the, these pilots achieve the wonderful feat of landing, flying the aeroplane with both engine failed for 60 miles. Air Canada Boeing 767 jet ran out of fuel in mid-flight. After both engines lost their power, the pilots made what is now thought to be the first successful emergency dead stick landing of a commercial jetliner. The pilots of the Ottawa to Edmonton flight came in over the end of the runway at Gimli, Manitoba at an abnormally high speed of about 180 knots. Because the engine failure made it impossible to use the flaps to make a slower approach. The captain, Robert Pearson, was helped engaging his approach to the 6,800 foot long strip by the fact that he had a glider pilot license for 10 years. Another fortunate circumstance was that the co-pilot, Morris Quintel, had taken training in the Canadian Air Force at the Gimli Field. Now, on this aeroplane, which was modified for Air Canada, the electronic gauging system was not working correctly. The captain used a dipstick to measure the volume of the fuel. The dipstick is a simple stick, like you are putting a finger in a liquid and measure which is calibrated to see the volume how much is spilled in the fuel tanks. However, the problem started as earlier aircraft of Air Canada were configured for pounds, whereas this particular first aircraft was calibrated in metric system, that is in kilograms. So here, the things went wrong. Pilots were not able to rely on the fuel gauge and while calculating instead of dividing the pounds by 2.2 factor. All the while, Captain thought that he is carrying fuel in kilograms and in actual case, the fuel on board measured with dipstick was in pounds. So the fuel actually carried was half of the fuel required for the flight and therefore en route at 41,000 feet, the full fuel ran out and both engines failed. So one can blame the pilot for miscalculating the fuel required. However, the survival skill of both these pilots ensured that nothing happened to this aircraft except one nose wheel landing gear collapse at the end of landing run. All 61 passengers on board were safe and sound. While the feat is commendable, within no time this could have led to a major disaster. This brings out two important aspects in the field of aviation. Number one, the quality training required at each stage of the career and the second is skill, competency and professionalism required in a demanding situation. This is your captain speaking.